All right, we're back with some more math. We're going to try another fraction division problem. We'll use the partition model again. And this time we'll do one that's a little bit more challenging. Again, you might see this written as 2 and 1 third divided by 1 and a quarter, or equivalently as something like 7 thirds divided by 5 quarters. But what we're going to do here is we're going to use the partition model, which means, for example, I have 2 and 1 third yards of fabric, uh, and that's enough for 1 and 1 quarter uh, wedding dress. Okay, so if I want to do that, I might want to know how much is in one wedding dress. This is enough fabric for 1 and a quarter, but I only need to make one dress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to physically represent my 2 and 1 third, but if you take a look, what I'm actually going to draw is I'm going to represent the fact that this is one whole wedding dress and a quarter of the next one. So this stuff over here, completely unnecessary. Now again, this entire piece right here is two and one third yards of fabric. Well, that's enough for, if you count them here, one, two, three, four, five pieces. Those five pieces are each one quarter of a wedding dress. So if I was to take my two and one third and divide it by five, which is the same as two and one third multiplied by one fifth, if I was to do that, that would tell me how much is in this one piece, or equivalently any single piece that's one of those quarters. Well, this is the same as 7 thirds, and if I'm multiplying it by 1 fifth, then I'm going to end up with 7 fifteenths. Now again, that's how much there is in one of these little pieces. And let me choose the same color here so we can kind of get the feel for it. So that's how much is in that one little piece but I don't need to know how much is in the one little piece. I'd like to know how much makes one whole wedding dress. And one whole wedding dress requires four of these pieces. So to finish this problem off, I'm going to take my 7 fifteenths that I had right here, and I'm going to multiply that by four because it takes four of those pieces to make one wedding dress. The end result is 28 fifteenths, which would be one whole yard and 13 fifteenths of the next yard. That's my end result. Again, this ties into the fact that I'm taking my 2 and 1 third and I am first dividing it by 5, which would be the same as multiplying by 1 fifth. And I'm taking that result, multiplying it by 4 because that's how many pieces would be in one whole dress. And apparently I want to make one whole dress. So that's going to be the same as 2 and 1 third times 1 fifth times 4, which is the same as 2 and 1 third times 4 fifths. What does this show? This shows that 2 and 1 third divided by 5 fourths is exactly the same result as 2 and 1 third times 4 fifths, and hopefully you can see why here. Let's take that exact same problem. 2 and 1 third divided by 5 quarters. And let's do partition, but let's do the order in the other direction. So instead of dividing by 5 first and then multiplying by 4, what happens if we multiply by 4 and then divide by 5? And why would we even want to do that? Let me see if I can show you why here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make four whole groups. Doo, 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 doo. Really not missing much. I think American Idol's on right now. So I guess I'm really missing something. But not really. Have you seen this season? It's horrible. Let's take a look then. What I'm going to do is represent this first group of one whole dress and a quarter, 
and that takes two and one-third yards. And now I'll come out and I'll take the next one and one-quarter dress, that's a dress and a quarter, and that is two and one-third yards. All right, well, let's take the next one then. Uh, running into some color issues. We'll grab this color. Here we are. Here's my next one. And this is two and one third. And lastly, uh, let's see here. Let's try this one again. Here's my next piece. Again, one and a quarter dress. And that is two and one third yards, giving me a grand total of two, four, six, eight eight and four thirds. So if you look at this, what I'm really doing is I'm taking two and one third and I'm multiplying it by four, which is gonna give me eight and four thirds. What I prefer to do though is turn this into seven thirds times four. So I'm sitting right now at 28 thirds. All right, well, let's see how much that's enough for though. That's enough for one whole dress let me check here. One whole dress right here. That's enough for a second dress. It's enough for a third dress. Heck, it's enough for this fourth dress, definitely. But if you notice these pieces that I have left, this piece, I could move up to the top and make another dress. This piece right here I could move up to the top and make another piece of the dress, sorry. And the next piece here, I could move up to the top, which apparently turned white. Let's pretend it didn't, there it is. And now that's enough for my fifth wedding dress. So if I had five groups of two and one, sorry, four groups of two and one third, Here's my four groups. That would be enough for five dresses. Uh, luckily, I don't need five dresses. I am just one man. So instead, I'll take my 28 thirds. That's enough for five dresses and say, I don't need five dresses. I just need one dress. So let me take this piece, multiply it by one fifth, and that'll be how much there is in one dress, which is one and 13 fifteenths. The result here matches exactly the model on the other side. So it's really your choice, whichever one you like best, but I'd love to see you knowing both because one of your students may like this method and another student might like this one. All right, off you go.